Our next guests are doing some rather unique things to help us kind of organize and share a lot of our social media. You know, people are on multiple sites and multiple social media sites and that sort of thing. And pictures, of course, are always something very important to all of us. Well, they're doing some amazingly fast and beautiful things, if you will. The company is called Cool Iris. Vice President for Business Development is Sebastian Bloom. Welcome into tomorrow, Sebastian. How are you? Hi, Dave. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Uh, tell me what you're showing here at Mobile World Congress. What? Uh, how are you generating this buzz that you guys have going? Yeah, we're excited to be here. As you know, um, the show participants know, this is the place to be for hot mobile applications. Um, you know, that piggyback on these fast networks that are being built out nationwide across the globe. And uh, we're showing off our uh, current version of the Cool Iris application, which is uh, currently available on iOS and soon also on Android. That you know, it's trying to solve a few things in your life. Um, one of the things, and the first one is trying to aggregate all your photo services into one application and taking advantage uh, of something that our CTO, Austin Shoemaker, has built is this 3D wall that really is, is fast, beautiful, and very sexy in the way that you can uh, discover and browse through your pictures. And uh, we do that with um, you know, 20 um, you know, well-known uh, photo sites, you know, starting with obviously Facebook, Instagram, Flickr, Picasa, uh, but also storage sites like Google Drive, SkyDrive, and Dropbox. You can aggregate all these pictures that you have in these digital silos and show them and, and navigate through them on your iPad or iPhone really nicely. And I like how you're calling them digital silos because, frankly, especially with pictures, most people have them stuck in a silo, whether it be their phone or a tablet or even their cameras, and it makes it very difficult sometimes to share or they might want to only share with certain people. And then it's just complicated to do that with some social sites. Uh, you're apparently making that a lot easier. Yes, I mean, even you know, us as an as a HMN company, all, all employees realized that when we started using the app ourselves is that we rediscovered things from the past as we moved on from a service to the next service. You know, you had this history of some services were hotter in the, early 90, in the late 90s, some, you know, a few years later became very popular. We all have these, these, these pictures still locked in there. Now, as you surface them in our application, what becomes really easy is now to share them uniquely. And that's something that we, that we do, I think, very differently in today's world where people, I think, have a choice of broadcasting to the world through some, you know, big, you know, global brands like a Twitter or Instagram or even, you know, do that in a controlled way to their friends on Facebook. But I think many times during the day, you don't actually do apply this broadcast. You don't want to share them publicly. You feel the intimacy is lost and you want to share it only with a close near and dear. And that's something that I think uh, we do very uniquely, how you can set up these groups uh, very, very easily that pertain and persist in our application, and media is presented in a really beautiful way there. So how do you answer folks that say, well, okay, I've already got Facebook, I'm already on Instagram, I, I use Flickr, and, and most of my friends do, which is why I got on all these platforms. Uh, why do I need to sort of aggregate them all together? Uh, is it really an advantage for folks to be able to, to say, don't worry, it doesn't matter what platform you're on, I can still share my photos with you? Yeah, I think photos and communication all these services that you just um, uh, talked about, they're partners of ours. So we actually uh, are working with them. And I don't think necessarily that uh, in the Internet world there's one service that kills it all. We all are using these services in parallel because they fill a, a, a particular need in our in our daily life. If I want to tell a message about Mobile World Congress to, let's say, fellow people in my industry, I want to create a brand perhaps out of myself or for the company, I tend to use Twitter for that. But I'm very shy on actually... Um, um, conveying a personal message, how I feel, how I personally feel. i rather do that over something that feels closer and, and close-knit. And for that, I, I, I probably use, if it's text-based, something like a text message or email. And, you know, our thing in, in this world, and we're trying to, to fill a gap, is doing that with media, where I can take, you know, lots of pictures as I go throughout the fair here, and I want to share them um, um, with my family and friends I don't tend to do that, uh, you know, with my personal life over these broadcast networks. That's why we think all these services will have a meaning in your life in parallel, and you will not trash one for the other. You will, th I think, still use a set of four or five relevant services in parallel. So then how does Cool Iris play an important role then in making all this happen? 
Yeah. So again, like I, I said uh, briefly a second ago, we really want to be the way where you flexibly share, where you can share out to these public places, where you can share out to Facebook, but as well where you can share out these pictures um, in these private groups. I can very easily set up these private groups with just an email or connect over uh, through a Facebook intent um, on our platform. And um, these groups are f- built up for that particular context, Nobody else is seeing that group, and I think that's something that people don't have in today's uh, Internet services that are mainstream. And uh, walk me through in, in about 30 seconds here how I would then use Cool Iris and, and use the app. Uh, you mentioned currently available on uh, iOS, uh, available on Android for us droids soon. Uh, give me an idea. Exactly. So you download the product from the App Store. Once you open it, you see our home view where you see a couple of big Internet brands, but also your local library. So if you touch upon your local library, in this case I'm on the iPad, the iPad camera roll, I can browse through my local media that I have that many people have filled um, once going back, I can then connect through Facebook to my Facebook world. And then now we're loading up uh, my newsfeed. I have access to other parts of my Facebook universe. I can check out all of my friends' pictures. When I go back, I can do the same for my Instagram. So it's, it's really bulletproof how through my login mechanisms, through these cloud services and the APIs, I can then connect all my relevant services. You can see here I've connected my Flickr my Picasa, Google Drive, and so forth. So you can personalize your experience. Now at the bottom you see a big bubble called groups. Once you have logged into the service, in these groups you can set up groups, um, you can set up a conversation with people. Um, I'm doing this by pressing this um, new group button on the left-hand side next to groups, and I can just uh, start to type in, let's say, the name of a friend. The address book will pop up. In this particular case, Hamon Parvizi, who's sitting next to me, my dear colleague. I'm adding him in the two field. Then I can, you know, I can give it a title. I'm giving it MWC for Mobile World Congress. And then I'll say, hi, I'll send it off. And he's receiving on the other side a notification. And now... The fun starts. I can check out some Facebook pictures and select a few. They're loading up here, but I could also. So, so let me just explain Sebastian's very quickly tapping some photos that he wants you to see, and very easily now, uh, once you've tapped these, there's a share button. So now you'll be able to see all these photos that quick on whatever platform, in this case Facebook, you've selected. Exactly. I press the share button. You can see how it builds that nice stack. I have the target list on the other side where to share to. I drop it into the Mobile World Congress and you can see how fast. That's something we really want to own in the market. See, people are tired of spinners and progress bars in this world, especially when we talk about you know urban areas and environments where I'm at a concert, football stadium, etc., they have no time. We want to be killer fast. Oh, well, you're doing that. Now I understand the amazingly fast and beautiful uh, part of, of the slogan. Cooliris.com. C-O-O-L-I-R-I-S.com. Just like it sounds. Get the app. How soon for Android? In about three to four weeks, we'll be ready. Okay, terrific. So keep an eye out for Android available now on iOS and no charge, of course, right? <laughs> Good. Take advantage of that. Uh, Sebastian, thanks for spending a few minutes with us here at Mobile World Congress and uh, continued good luck as you do more and cooler things. Let us know. Thank you. Thank you.